The Solon family name is well known in Idaho. It's synonymous with sheep ranching. The Solons have been raising sheep in southwest Idaho since 1926. Harry Solon Sr. started the business with the purchase of the Mesa Sheep Company near Cambridge. He grew the operation to the point where they ran 10,000 sheep and 400 head of cattle on 32,000 acres of land in five southwest Idaho counties. Harry's son, Phil, who's still very active in the business, is a spry 88 years old now. He grew the family sheep operation to 47,000 acres of land in eight southwest Idaho counties, with 12,000 sheep and 1,800 beef cattle at the peak of operations. I like everything about it. Ranching, you're, you live out in the open. You look up at the sky and you know what it's going to do, the day is, and, and rain or shine, well, you got your work to do and you just do it, that's all. But it's an active life. Uh, I just, that's what I like about it. It's that simple. Solon Livestock is one of the last large range outfits remaining in the state of Idaho. They trail their sheep on an incredible journey that spans hundreds of miles through southwest Idaho following the green. In the winter, they graze in the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area. In March, they trail the ewes to the Solon Sheep Camp on the Payette River near Letha for shearing, going around the city of Caldwell in the process. Next, they trail the sheep to the Solon's Spring Range in Crane Creek, where the ewes give birth to lambs. It's called range lambing. And then in June, they trail the sheep across West Mountain to Summer Range in the Payette National Forest. It's an amazing outfit in that they uh, winter in the Birds of Prey area down by the Snake River. Those sheep never see a truck and they'll go all the way to uh, McCall, Idaho. You know, this is truly a unique outfit, something that you don't see in the, in the West uh, very, very much anymore. But uh, I don't know, that's probably a 600 mile round, round trip. Those, those ewes walk every year, five to 600 miles. That's quite an epic hike for the sheep and the herders who stay with them every step of the way. But the whole idea is to raise quality lambs and keep the costs of production under control, Solon says. By having winter grazing permits on BLM land, for example, the Solons don't have to feed the sheep hay in the winter months. You had to go out and put this together yourself. You didn't just happen. You had to have the vision that what it took to make it a a sustainable year-round operation that could be profitable. According to people who know Phil Solon, he has a knack for making sound business decisions and taking good care of the range. And he, he adapted to change and, and uh, uh, made a, a great sheep outfit. I mean, he, he bought ranches that were complementary to other ranches and sold, sold areas that were kind of surplus and weren't weren't critical, but always kept that eye on the ball of long-term sustainability of the sheep operation. He cares a lot for his community and for his family and for his friends. He's, a, he's got great friends everywhere in Idaho, whether it's in the business community, the livestock community. You know, he's, he's very revered in the Weezer area where, where they've been all their lives and because they spend half the year in McCall with the sheep and half the year in, in Weezer. So, both, both areas, he's very, very, very revered. Coming from a ranching background, the Little family spent family time with the Solon family. Lieutenant Governor Little dated Teresa Solon when they were both at the University of Idaho, and they got married soon after graduating. I had a little bit of advantage because uh, uh, both he and I had a passion for the livestock industry, so um, and, and for our family, so that was always something we had an opportunity to, to uh, visit about, and talk about business, talk about public lands issues, talk about, uh, you know, the history of uh, the livestock industry in Idaho. I've known Phil Solon my entire life, and he's an amazing individual, uh, a, a real entrepreneur. Uh, he's a good businessman. He knows how to take a calculated risk and he's been very successful in it, which benefited not only the Solon family, but also 
the community. He's created a tax base, hired people, uh, uh, just uh, have been a, a, uh, 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 an amazing philanthropist, you know, uh, in the community. Dr. Mark Pritchard, a retired veterinarian in Weezer, helped care for the Solon sheep and cattle for nearly 40 years and became friends with the family. We became good friends and I'm also good friends with uh, his son Harry. Actually all the family members. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm kind of part of the family. Phil is my golfing partner in men's league. He just turned 88 last week. He shot a hole in one this year. He told me it was his fifth one, but he always carries me in the golf game. He's a very good golfer. Very competitive at everything. Uh, I guess those words I could say, he's very competitive. He's also very fair in everything that he does. Sullen's philanthropy in Weezer goes deep. He's been on the school board. Uh, he was on that for many years. He's a really a uh, proponent of education. He's helped out the, the school get things, bonds passed and, and those things. He also is very active in the Weezer Education Association, which gives scholarships to deserving kids going to college. Um, and he's uh, on the hospital board and donated uh, money to improve our facility here in, in Weezer. They've been very generous to the community uh, and uh, been a big part of it um, for years. Phil Sullen was born in 1929, the same year that his father purchased the Clinton Sheep Company. His mother was named Beulah. Phil grew up working on the ranch alongside his father. Well, of course, as a kid, I worked on the ranches and drove old Poppin' Johnny's that started them on gasoline and then you switch to kerosene. Really? The old John Deere, eh? Yeah, that's what I drove. Well, of course, before that I drove a team of horses because every summer that's where I went, the Sorry. ranch. Phil graduated from Weezer High School with the class of 1948 and got a business degree from the University of Idaho in 1953. He was in the Phi Delta Theta fraternity. University of Idaho YouTube video looks back on Phil's college days. Well, I think I was, like most students, I really was homesick the first year. Well, that's just the way it was. <laughs> but I got over that pretty quick, and then I did everything there was to do. Being a house manager, and then ended up being president before I graduated. I was in the School of Business. They called it Extractive Industries, I think, at that time, but fancy name like that. But Nevertheless, the ag courses were important, no question. Because my father being in the livestock business, the sheep principally and cattle too, why I planned on going home and being in the same business. The day after Phil graduated from the University of Idaho, he married Erlene Clyde in Moscow. Erlene also had deep agrarian roots. She grew up on a family farm in Moscow. Phil and Arlene would have three daughters and one son, Teresa, Margaret, Helen, and Harry. The Solon's sheep operation captured the imagination of College of Idaho professor and author Louis Atterbury, who wrote a book about their sheep operation. It's titled Sheep May Safely Graze, the name of a beautiful pastoral song by Johann Sebastian Bach. Let's take a tour of the Solon sheep ranching operation by season, starting with the spring. For the Solons, the beginning of spring is marked by shearing their sheep. The Solons shear the ewes in March at a large ranch next to the Payette River. A crew from Wyoming shears the sheep. The animals come through the shearing trailer five to six at a time while the men cut off the wool cape in a way that preserves the whole cape. That's the sort of name of the game if we can de-fleece it or shear it and keep that fleece nice and whole, put it out, then the girls can sort the, 
the good wool from the mainly short wool. They're trying to pull the short wool away from the long wool, then the long wool is put into grades. The shearing crew is skilled at what they do. We like to try and get around 800, which gives us about you know, 135 to 140 a man. Sheep shearing is a specialized skill. The shearers come from all over the world. Well, we've got guys in there from Peru, Australia, New Zealand, and America, so it's a bit of a, a mixture in there. The shearers make about $300 a day. The crew is nomadic. They work in Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado in the spring months, Europe in the summer, and Australia and New Zealand the rest of the year. And then we'll all get back to Australia in October. I won't get back to New Zealand till Christmas time. The shearing crew separates the wool into different grades and bales it in a hydraulic press. The Solons have a barn where they can store the wool until the prices are best. After all of the ewes get sheared, they follow the green up north towards the Solons' extensive spring range in Crane Creek. The Solons own four different ranches in the Crane Creek area, totaling about 45,000 acres, all contiguous. Phil bought the center ranch at one time to unify their blocks of land. It was really important to us because we had to traverse coming to go to our lower ranch country across Crane Creek. We had to come and there was a disconnect that we had to cross this property here. I bought it. It was a good move. The Solons used to shed lamb on their ranch on the Payette River. But to save labor costs, they converted to range lambing many years ago. It's important to keep the ewes in small groups when they're first giving birth, explains Solon's foreman, Caesar Alon. Because they, they, they're easy, they can lose their lambs. I mean, a bigger group is hard to find, and they can bump them up and they can, the baby die. A small group, they, it's more easy to First days it's more easy to find the, the mama find the baby. We lamb them during the day. If they born here, born there, and we keep continue moving, moving. And then as soon as they during the day maybe they lamb like let's say 50 or 40. We leave there and then at night another group and and pretty soon we go like that. The Solon's Peruvian herders keep watch over more than 4,000 ewes while they give birth to lambs. After a wet winter, the range is deep green with lots of feed, and there's also plenty of water as all of the reservoirs are full in the Crane Creek Range. Phil Solon developed many of the reservoirs over his lifetime. Well, that's, that's the key to everything. If you don't have the water, why? <laughs> you can't graze this country. So we have methodically over the years built, I have a on the other side of Crane Creek Canyon, I have 25 reservoirs. And on this side, probably five or six reservoirs. And uh, so, they're the key. The Solons graze their cattle and sheep herds in the same area. Sheep and cattle on the very same pieces of ranges is the way to go. Because they, they eat the different forage. And they've, we've done that for years, and our range is as good a condition as anybody's in the country. In June, the Solons and their herders trail the sheep from the Crane Creek Range to McCall and the Payette National Forest for summer grazing. They take the old stock driveway from Indian Valley over West Mountain and then follow the timbered ridge into the National Forest. The Payette Forest gets lots of snow in the winter, and so it makes for great summer range, with lots of vegetation for the sheep to eat. At one time, the Solons grazed 10,000 sheep on 115,000 acres of forest grazing allotments during the summer. By this time, two of the Solon children, Margaret and Harry, were working alongside Phil raising the sheep. Margaret also served in leadership roles in the American Sheep Industry Association a trade organization that works to help ranchers with immigration and public land issues. In the early 1990s, a big issue came to the forefront, concerns about domestic sheep transmitting pneumonia to bighorn sheep in Hell's Canyon. 
bighorn sheep hunters wanted to reintroduce bighorns into Hell's Canyon to bolster historical populations. A total of 33 sheep were transplanted into Hell's Canyon in 1976 and 1979. In January 1997, the Wallowa Whitman National Forest wrote a letter to the Idaho Wool Growers Association asking for their support in the reintroduction effort. The letter stated that the reintroduced animals would be considered at risk for potential disease transmission and death. The three departments will also take whatever action is necessary to reduce further losses of bighorn sheep without adversely impacting existing domestic sheep operations, the letter said. The supervisor of the Wallowa Whitman National Forest signed the letter along with the directors of the Idaho Fish and Game, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, the BLM, and the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. The Solon's sheep did not graze in Hell's Canyon per se, but their sheep grazed in part of the Payette Forest where it might be possible that bighorns cross paths with domestic sheep. Disease can be spread if they touch noses, according to experts. It's also possible for disease to be spread at close range through airborne bacteria. After the reintroduction effort occurred, bighorn sheep numbers declined, and three environmental groups filed a lawsuit, claiming that bighorns and domestic sheep could not coexist. They wanted the Payette National Forest to terminate domestic sheep grazing in five grazing allotments where there might be overlap with bighorns. In 2008, U.S. District Judge Lynn Windmill ordered the Payette Forest to do an environmental impact study on the matter. In the end, Payette National Forest Supervisor Suzanne Rainville ruled in 2010 that the domestic sheep would have to be phased out. The Sullins had to sell off more than 5,000 sheep. Two other sheep ranchers, Ron Schertz and Mick Carlson, were put out of business entirely. You know, I was involved in the wool growers when they originally uh, proposed uh, introducing bighorn sheep back into Hell's Canyon area, and we thought we had a deal. We thought we just felt like it was really a body blow. It was a, uh, it, it was unfair. The Idaho wool growers took the issue to court using that letter from the Wallowa Whitman National Forest as proof that domestic sheep were supposed to be held harmless if a disease issue arose. The case went all the way to the Idaho Supreme Court, and the justices ruled that the letter was not an official contract and did not carry sufficient weight to stop the Forest Service ruling. Now, seven years later, it's still hard for Phil Sullen to talk about that loss. No. I'm a stubborn, stubborn old devil. I'm pretty unhappy about it, but I, I have to get over that. It's hard to change. Today, the bighorn sheep population in Hell's Canyon, Unit 18, the one at issue with domestic sheep use, has approximately 15 bighorn sheep residing in it, an increase of two animals since a survey was completed in 2009, according to Idaho Fish and Game. Disease continues to be a problem in the wild sheep herds. Fishing game biologists say, as wild female sheep carrying the Pasteurella virus pass it on to the lambs. We're trying to prevent any more disease from infecting the herds, says Francis Cassier, bighorn biologist for Idaho Fish and Game. Overall, there are an estimated 850 bighorn sheep in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho in the greater Hell's Canyon region. Another issue that the Solons have to cope with every year is protecting their sheep from predators. They deal with coyotes, bears, and cougars when raising the lambs in Crane Creek. And then they brace for impacts by wolves in the National Forest. One August, wolves stampeded the sheep into a deep ravine in the Payette Forest. We had some wolves that got into uh, one of our bands one night, got them running in some steep country and piled up a bunch of them. We lost, our, our count was about 57 in that sheep pile up. Uh, we were able to uh, confirm those as uh, due to wolves. Uh, we know that some more that we didn't find and some that couldn't be confirmed were also killed by wolves. We had some bear losses, but 
kind of our total summer losses, the way we, we guess and what we know was about 100 head of sheep. We've had some of the years in the past where we lost over 300 to wolves in a single summer. To decrease losses, the Solons use more guard dogs with each band of sheep and keep the sheep close to camp at night when wolves are likely to attack. Now at night, we try and bed the sheep as close as we can to camp. And so the herders, the herd dogs, and the guard dogs are all there very close, and that certainly helps. Yeah, we've got three or four guard dogs in every band. We're very well aware of the problem, and so we're probably uh, suffering less losses than we would otherwise. In the fall, when the temperatures drop in the mountains and the lambs are getting ready for shipping, the Solons move the sheep to Seder Meadows in the Payette Forest. The long hike has finally come to an end for the lambs. The Solons have a shipping corral in the meadows. Family, friends, and volunteers come to help drive the sheep into a narrow chute where lambs are separated from the ewes and loaded into the trucks one by one. Phil Solon helps load the sheep into the truck next to Stan Boyd. Boyd has worked on finding the best deal for the Solons with American wholesale meat processors through the Rocky Mountain Sheep Marketing Association, a producer-owned co-op. We operate on, on a world market, and right now there tends to be a kind of a worldwide shortage of, of lamb. Our job is to go out and meet with the feeders and the packers and sell these lambs at the highest possible price. And, and it's been successful. Yes, but sadly, the number of sheep ranching operations in Idaho has declined over the years because of competition from Australia and New Zealand. Low prices, labor issues, and federal land management issues, Boyd says. There's, it's uh, severely reduced when I came on board as executive director of the Idaho Wool Growers in 1978. There was 600,000 head of breeding stock in the state of Idaho. Today, about 180,000. So it's reduced by two thirds. But it seems to have leveled out. And you'll have, you know, you have, what, maybe 30 range outfits left in the state of Idaho. But they figured it out and they know, you know, they've worked on the economics and they've made it cost effective. Wholesale stores like Costco sell Australia and New Zealand lamb at rock bottom prices. The Sullins and Boyd would prefer that people support American sheep producers by buying American lamb. Check the label in the grocery store. Phil Sullins says American lamb chops are larger and taste better. They bring in their frozen product and, and they undercut your, but it isn't as good a product. So what lamb is produced by we Americans, why it ends up going to the metropolitan area. So you never see it here in the local store. Greater price than they sell the New Zealand for. And there are people that'll buy it. I'm glad to have it. Because it's a, it's a better lamb chop. Overall, at shipping time, the ranchers are happy to see the product of a year's worth of work. Quality lambs that have been raised on nothing but natural vegetation in the Idaho mountains and mother's milk. Harry Sullen counts the sheep as they come into the corral. The horses that have been carrying pack saddles all summer take a break in the frosty meadow. The guard dogs lie down near the corral. Well, we ship in the fall of the year, that, and when we say ship, that's when we uh, wean the lambs off of the ewes and send them to market. Um, and it's kind of the culmination of all your efforts for the year. You get to be out amongst animals, you get to work with some of the most wonderful people in the world. Um, you get to see how the grass grows differently every year. Uh, you know, how could you? How how could anyone not love this business? I really miss the sheep. Teresa and I were raised uh, going to Sheerans and going to Shippens. Our kids were raised going to Sheerans, going to Shippens, and now Teresa uh, makes sure that our grandkids uh, go up and help fill whether they're shipping lambs or whether they're shearing. She'd been taking not only our grandkids, but all our friends' grandkids to, to shearing and shipping, and it's just a big part of our life. After the Solon's lambs are shipped to the market, 
it's time to breed the ewes to a group of rams and start the whole cycle over again. The ewes graze their way home to the Crane Creek Range, and then before winter comes, they'll head back to the BLM pastures in the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area. At 88, Sullen is glad to see his youngest child, Harry, running the whole operation now. Margaret has retired in Salisbury, Maryland with her husband, Joe Hinson. It's been a good long life here on the ranch. Very few people get to uh, grow up and work with their family or their father like I have, and then quite honestly just uh, working uh, hand in hand with them day in and day out and picking up the way they, the way he did it, uh, you know, it's been, you know, it's been, it's been a great experience for me. And it's been a good life, and still is a good life, because I can still do quite a few things. Thank goodness we got somebody like Harry to manage it, though. Phil is still playing golf, and he likes to go fishing when he has some spare time. Once in a while, hit a decent chop. <laughs> but, but I did get the hole in one this break, I guess. Harry, meanwhile, plans to keep the business moving forward, and he hopes one or both of his children may have an interest in a ranching career. I see the industry being viable, and uh, definitely people uh, want to wear wool, and people want to eat lamb, and so as long as, uh, as, long as we can uh, make it work, you know, we plan on keeping going, you know. I would love to see this operation go on to the uh, next generation beyond me. I've got uh, a son and daughter and they're still young and we'll see what uh, they are starting to show some interest in the business. And if they want to, I'd love to uh, provide them that opportunity. And it'd be great to see uh, Solon Livestock go into the uh, fourth generation and hopefully beyond that.